Uh, last year, we, we cleared the equivalent of 92,000 legacy asylum claims, and we processed a total of over 112,000 claims, largest volume in uh, two decades. The total asylum backlog is now at its lowest point since December 2022. Recruitment of uh, processors continues, and we will continue to review and improve our processes to accelerate the decision-making from here on in. Andy Carter. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I'm very grateful to the Home Secretary for that update. There are still four hotels in and around Warrington housing asylum seekers. Can you give us an update on closing hotels? And what steps is he taking to speed up the processing of refugees when they're in a hotel waiting the outcome of their claim? Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, my honourable friend makes uh, a, an important uh, link between the speed of asylum processing and the need for asylum accommodation of various forms, including uh, hotels. We are moving away from using hotels as uh, an accommodation type, reducing the cost to the public purse, and we will maintain recruitment levels and improve processes so that the speed of processing which we now see will be continued. Whilst I can't make commitments about the specific hotels in his constituency, he should rest assured that we are seeking to drive down the numbers that we rely upon. Wendy Chamberlain. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My constituent arrived in the UK 15 months ago and was interviewed, but has been waiting now over a year to get a final response. And he's not alone. According to the Refugee Council, 33,085 asylum cases have been lodged in the last six months alone, putting ever more strain on a broken system. So um, the, the uh, Secretary of State outlined the fact that uh, the legacy backlog is going down. But what about those more recent cases? Can he outline what has been done to deal with those? <coughs> Well, the improved processes and increased numbers of uh, Home Office officials working on this will mean that not only the legacy cases are dealt with more quickly, but the current cases are dealt with uh, more quickly, reducing the need for asylum accommodation of all types. Whilst I can't comment on individual cases, because of course circumstances differ from uh, each one, she should rest assured that the lessons we have learnt about the increased speed of processing will benefit uh, uh, those already in the system. And of course, we are also determined to drive down the number of people coming here in the first place, reducing the pressure on our asylum processing system in doing so. Mr. Stephen Kinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, yeah, yeah, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the shambolic incompetence of this government across every aspect of its disgraceful mismanagement of our country's asylum system knows no bounds. Yeah, yeah. But today I will highlight a particularly egregious example. We already knew that removal of asylum seekers whose claims have been rejected have collapsed by 50 per cent since Labour left office in 2010. But over the weekend, it emerged that the Home Office has lost contact with an astonishing 85 per cent of the 5,000 people who have been identified for removal to Rwanda. So can I ask the Home Secretary, where on earth are these 4,250 asylum seekers who have gone missing? Will he drop all the smoke and mirrors and acknowledge that the Rwanda plan is just an extortionately expensive and unworkable distraction? Yep. And finally, when will he adopt Labour's plan to recruit 1,000 additional immigration enforcement officers to a new returns unit so that we can have a system that's based on common sense? Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. No, no, it's not thank you. Can I just say I've got to get a lot of people in and it's totally unfair. That was very, very long and I was coughing to give you to stop. Not to continue the signal we need to understand is if you don't want a particular backbench to get in, please point them out because it's giving me that problem. Home Secretary. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the mask has slipped with regard to the Labour Party. The quote from the Labour Party that even if the Rwanda scheme were to be successful, they would not keep it. And that shows, and that shows what the party opposite really thinks about this. They have no plan, they have no commitment, and they've even said that if something is working, they would scrap it. Nigel Mills. Number two, please. She asked one question. Number two. 